Namaste. Namaste. And welcome to our continuing series on Savitri. Savitri is the message with our beloved Dr. Alok Pandey. Namaste. Namaste sir. Today we enter a very, very extraordinary passage. And I have to read from the beginning of the line because it is, it is so powerful. In the beginning is prepared the close. This strange, irrational product of the Maya, this compromise between the beast and God, is not the crown of thy miraculous world. I know there shall inform the inconscient cells, at one with nature, and at height with heaven, a spirit vast as the containing sky, and swept with ecstasy from invisible founts, a god come down, and greater by the fall. I'll move on a little bit. A giant dance of Shiva tore the past. There was a thunder as of worlds that fall. Earth was o'errun with fire and the roar of death, clamoring to slay a world his hunger had made. There was a clangor of destruction's wings. The titan's battle cry was in my ears. Alarm and rumor, alarm and rumor shook the armored night. I saw the omnipotence flaming pioneers over the heavenly verge which turns towards life come crowding down the amber stairs of birth. Forerunners of a divine multitude out of the paths of the morning star they came into the little room of mortal life. I saw them cross the twilight of an age, the sun-eyed children of a marvelous dawn, the great creators with wide brows of calm, the massive barrier breakers of the world, and wrestlers with destiny in her lists of will, the laborers in the quarries of the gods, the messengers of the incommunicable, the architects of immortality. I think one of the key messages of Sri is that man is a transitional being. It is implicit in the logic of creation, whichever way we look at it. If we look at it from the spiritual perspective that there is the divine presence in matter and creation is an act of the divine extending himself, manifesting himself. If we take that viewpoint, then it will be absurd to believe that his creativity ends with man. Truly, if such is the final product, then one would wonder <laughs> the original creativity of the creator. And if you take the purely materialist point of view, that there is no God, you will have to still admit that there is an evolutionary impulsion in nature. doesn't matter what we call it. And strangely, this impulsion is leading the little dust to go right up to man. So that impulsion, doesn't matter what we call it, which has carried creation right up to man, will stop with man, is almost, you know, it's imbecilic. It's, imbecilic. <laughs> it is bound to carry on further. Now, only thing is that when we use the word that it is material, then whether the next creation will be um, titanic or godlike, that can be debated because... If you take the viewpoint of the typical material science that it is a uh, survival of the fittest, then it may take one route. But actually, if you look at nature closely, it's very interesting that it is survival of the fittest in the sense, who is the fittest? Fittest is not the brute and the strongest. 
So now if you see the curve of evolution, it is going towards soft powers. If brute and strongest were the fittest, then, and if it was just a question of fittest surviving, then there was no need for virus to go further. I mean, virus can still fall a man. But this was Nietzsche's position. Yeah. That this titan Sri Aurobindo speaks of was the aggrandized Ekro, human being. Yes. So that's how Nietzsche saw the coming of the next species. You see that in Isaac Asimov, some of the novels. And even now there is this about the age of the machines. In some way or the other, people are beginning to at least conceive that man is not the close of the grand epic of uh, evolution. Can but anyone disagree? Yeah, that's it. Can anyone disagree? <laughs> but the whole question is uh, whether it will go further to a godlike humanity or it will go towards a titanic humanity. Well, the titan will try his best to create an image of the aggrandized ego as the future humanity. Whereas ultimately it is always the godlike which will evolve. So we see today a battle between these two types. Always these two types have been there, but the titan trying to, on one side, uh, fill in fill this world with horror and dismay, despair, doubts, or sometimes create an imitation of the Godhead it denies. So I have seen people once uh, in one of the prestigious premier institutes of India, I was called for a talk on, uh, guest lecture on... Uh, evolution but from a biological point of view so after the talk uh, they said Dr. Saab, what you are saying is true I can see that evolution is bound to take place but what he told next was horrifying he said already we are having organ transplants and all this so very soon we will be able to really have immortal bodies bionic, bionic, bi man. bionic man now this is what the titan what does he do it fabricates Something which looks like a, yes, this is the Superman. But the sup even Hitler spoke of Superman. But the Superman that Shurabindu speaks about is, is a benevolent being, full of compassion. And the mother pointed it in one of her, uh, after one of her experiences where she was uh, hit very badly by these forces, adverse forces. And she fell so sick that it was like on the deathbed, 1962. And she says the battle is going on in the body. And after some time, finally she says, well, the deed is done. And then she says, who were the beings who were trying to uh, wage the entire war against her? She says, there is a group of beings who have taken something of what Sri Aurobindo has written. And they have tried to turn it into a typical religious teaching, wherein you have this idea of punishing somebody who, you know, uh, is not on the path and things like that. Typical religion. Uh, which religions we know very well. So I've been told don't uh, talk too much about re religions which are aggressive and they aggrandize God's image into a stern judge and they are killing those who are non-believers. I am not going to speak anything more. But I don't <laughs> think you have to say anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but... There will be an attempt to do something similar with Sri Aurobindo's teaching because the force is the same. If you look at the same force has always marred God's work. Always. So even when God's messengers have come, it has picked it up and turned it into a kind of uh, institutionalized divine. <laughs> if I may say so. Divine shed within an institution, within creeds, formulas. And all that is outside the pole is uh, condemned. So, Mother says, it will try to create a very hard, cruel religion out of Sri Aurobindo's teachings. But she says, everyone must know that this is not true. Sri Aurobindo is great and she says, he is great and benevolent and compassionate. These are the words she uses. He is great and benevolent and compassionate. So the truth that he brings is a truth of compassion, truth of benevolence, not that she, she has cautioned us. So this battle goes on. And that's where we see, because of this battle, what happens is there is a lot of destruction which happens. 
and destruction why of the good shobindo uses a word very uh, in a passage in ss divine and human he says the pandits say that you know in kali things are destroyed he says yes it is a kind of catharsis but he says it's not only things which are bad even things which are seemingly good good things are destroyed and then he explains why because good things have been used to give them a twist and turn them for evil purposes their work betrayed their good to evil turned so you see many of the religions if if in sanatan dharma it escaped it was only because of the acceptance of the evolutionary principle because there is not one book there are uh, new revelations there are always new gurus masters many sided so it escaped but even there there is a tendency for sex to form and crystallize things so uh, this because of this there will be a making clean sweep of the whole ground even things which we um, cherished as good and they were good and yet they have become obstacles on the path because of this reason that we use a great truth and reduce it to Uh, you know something so perverse wo perverse i mean i give 100 examples and one of them in the indian context other religions we are well aware that is unspeakable but even in indian context where there is such wideness i feel so uh, sad not only now earlier when i used to go to durga puja pandals i mean she is such a wonderful goddess how can you after invoking her by the side you have bollywood songs and then you have you know uh, all kinds of things going around in the name of just by the side and around durga puja so this is how i used to feel that why are you doing it you are actually dishonoring the goddess um and this is how even in uh, most of the pujas you see at the end people drink and they go you know they do the visarjanam so all this has to go a new entirely new approach has to come otherwise the whole thing had turned into falsehoods it's 100 examples i could give i mean the recent one people do this uh, there is a fasting done in india called karwa chauth whoever started it is somewhere somewhere somebody is mentioned that if a woman fasts her husband will live long on a particular day now the paradox is the woman is fasting apparently for a husband but her mind is on someone else i mean these are facts of you know <laughs> and nothing wrong with that but the whole thing is look at the facade look at the falsehood that goes on and uh, other days everybody is fighting but on that particular day you are keeping a fast so all this has to go so this new world, why all this old thing is gone is because even there were great things the fundamental truths will always remain that you know ekam evidityam there is one without a second these truths will remain the truth of the divine reality the truth of divine compassion grace uh, inter uh, you know intervention of god these things will remain but the forms are going to go because these forms have become you know hubs of all that is dark you know uh, a religion as great as uh, sikhism which uh, shobindo said was the first attempt to form a spiritualized society but um, i have been in uh, you know patiala during the hey days of operation blue star and next to that can you imagine such high truths were reduced to a hub where terrorists were actually hiding and you can't do anything because you know they are taking shelter inside a gurudwara so that's the time they had to storm so naturally because people started using god for unspeakable things so all the outer forms and formulas some of them are very good but they are going to go completely but what is going to come that's what this passage reveals to us so what is going to go but this something very interesting this line yesterday we were speaking about it in the beginning is prepared the close and i often quote this you know um, to the traditional people who say but where is it written that uh, there will be a divine creation it's all maya So I ask them why the impulse to creation started. So they quote from the scripture, "Eko ham bahushyam." I said, "What does it mean?" The divine said, "I am one, but I'll become many." So many means what? Many divine beings, not just many human beings. <laughs> so it is very evident that in the beginning is prepared the close. 
This is the original plan of creation is the one delight will multiply itself countless times. And then we see that passage which you read about the giant dance of Shiva toward the past. Otherwise what will happen is again we will get into the same old formula, same old patterns and reduce a profound truth. When mother was asked about you know uh, worship, she says wonderful everything is fine. She says but do you really believe that a real God, divine being really likes that you sit there and do that kind of external worship? He would much better that you imbibe the qualities and grow into them. So when you read Shurabindo's The Mother, where he speaks about the four great goddesses, the whole understanding about worshipping the goddesses changes. He doesn't say that when you worship Maheshwari, take this flower and put it there. He says wideness, compassion, wisdom, wisdom, light, height, wideness. This is Maheshwari. And anybody who strives to climb to that level, Becomes an instrument of Maheshwari. Mahakali, impulses that are straightforward, frank, truthfulness. These are the things which Mahakali likes. She doesn't, uh, you know, you may put a nice image and go there and uh, be in front of her all kinds of falsehood. <laughs> if she really awakens, you can't stand in front of her. And then Mahalakshmi, you see how crudely we worship and regard her as goddess of outer wealth and people ask money from her. By all kinds of means. But who is Mahalakshmi? She is the goddess of beauty and harmony and love. All internalized. All the gods have become in Shurabindo's uh, yoga. They become internalized realities. I wouldn't use the word qualities. But realities. And that's how we have to grow. So the whole movement is from outside to within. And from within to grow upward. So this is why it is destroying all the forms. The Indian legion of Sati. Sati dies in the Yagya Vedi for Parvati to be born. And we are aware of that. What happened to Mr. Daksh, uh, whatever his surname was, when you know people tried to revive him because Shiva has cut him. I mean, it's very interesting legion. Shiva in the court seat in Bandi Matram. And when Daksh had his, he slain by none else but you know, Shiva's gun. So every, all the gods, please do something about him, revive him. He is after all the Prajapati. Prajapati is somebody who has set the rules of the creation. So he says, okay. So they fix a goat's head which is turned backward. So if he moves forward, they get a feeling they are moving backward. And if he moves backward, he is actually moving forward. So it is a very strange scenario. So the body and the form has been slain. And we have to understand that, that it's a new creation. It is not going to be built along or we cannot judge it along the lines of the old. And that's why there's a beautiful, one of the marvelous lines here, a God come down and greater by the fall. See, um, gods, they are living in very vast and high consciousness. And they like uh, human beings to be their instrument. They like to influence them. So it's a mutual relationship. You worship, so by worship they give something of their consciousness to the gods. That is a Vedic lore. A Vedic method actually. Even Greeks followed it. And the gods in turn will give you what they can give. So gods grow in terms of their larger influence through that process. And the human being grows by this interchange. But when gods take a human body... It's a very different thing because they suddenly are in a state of imprisonment. Yet because of contact with the human psychic substance, they can evolve further. So a god come down and greater by the fall and this is the story of Bhishma. Bhishma is one of the gods of the mid-worlds. He is a Vasu and he is cursed and he is born into a human body. And he goes through all that he goes through. But when he dies, finally leaves the body. He is told that you go to the regions beyond the regions of the Vasu. So all other seven brothers stay there. But he goes to a region beyond it. Why? Because earth, there is the evolutionary principle. So the moment gods take a human body, they evolve. So this is a time when these gods, these beings of the greater world are bound to take a human body they want. Because this is the time they can really evolve by the contact with the supreme directly in matter. This only human consciousness can, can provide. No world has this privilege. But many of them don't want to. Yes. Most because of them. Because they are happy with their 
powers and it's a struggle powers. it's a struggle yes. the moment you enter a human consciousness is so crammed up and the, there is a line in savitri she uh, had in her the anguish of the gods they can't see life as it is they see the falsehoods and the facades so this is the god come down and then overpass whether leaden or leaden leaden formulas of the mind right leaden. led in formulas of the mind so then all the minds ifs buts dos don't it goes away and he sees the truth that is to come and then we go to the end of the page i saw the omnipotence flaming pioneers just when the mahabharata is going on the geeta is born so i take this example that when all is getting destroyed the new creation is beginning to sprout up because the ground has been cleared these are the hope so always it will be the children who will bring hope into this world it has always been so actually and um, they will grow they will have a new consciousness this is god's way and the mother in 1958 made it very clear that the children who are born 58 after 56 7 yeah but even 58 she says that with material nature she had a uh, material nature accepted the new principle which means all the children who will be born after that they will carry a little chip divine chip in their very substance and of course we all will be born again and again so it's not like one life 60 <laughs> before that or after that because it's a process so this all the children who they will write in their very bodies carry something of that touch and that's why we see that the change which is taking place children they want more space they want uh, freedom to explore they want you know uh, to discover their own way of life it's a dangerous space but they have to go through it they want to break the old molds they want to break the old molds they they have not yet discovered the new so there is a confusion but they are not going to be content with the old way that is for sure and this is how they will discover like humanity coming in the midst of the animal life didn't know what it is supposed to do it didn't have the vitality of the ape or the strength of the elephant but it knew something is there in it which is different but when in the 1960s this really yes. broke out yes uh what have you seen in the children uh, or experienced in recent years many things so uh, like all of us i've been in contact with quite a number of children 8 uh, year old 9 year old 10 year old and they are save a spontaneous intuitive understanding of truth and i have given several examples here um some of them read savitri and intuitively understand it they say i'm talking of a 10 year old reading savitri and then saying you know what it is so clear what is so clear parents are all surprised then the child explains this is what it means so the parent shared with me that you know uh, this is how this child has understood i said this is so fantastic and this is happening they they intuitively sense it another child will probably be coming the child um you know because it was it communication so i said ki i have never seen him can you send me a picture so that i at least connect with the who the ch- this child is 9 <laughs> year old who is you know alok da is talks and all listening regularly and doesn't want to be disturbed when you know so when the child was told that you know alok da wants to ta- see a photograph of you oh is it so he stood with pose picked up seven copies of savitri all from the house put them in line by the side so his spirit says why are you doing the oh, look the love savitri no so i must be surrounded with savitri now it may look like a childish thought but it is not how could he grasp that this is the essence of the whole thing plenty of children and uh, on one side there you know the description when we read we understand why what these children are on this passage which you just read when mother was asked you know about these new age children she said yes Uh, but you must know that they are going to be not easy to bring up 
they are not going to follow your norms and they they'll respect truth if you tell them touch the feet because he's elder they'll question you elder is not the criteria but it, the authority is never a criteria at one place i was so surprised mother says tell your ego the age of the ego is gone and authoritarianism will not work you try to do things with authority even if you are doing the right thing it will not work it will backfire because these children don't understand that way you can rationally argue with them discuss with them whatever it be it may be right or wrong but authority you try to thrust upon them they refuse and reject so and they can immediately detect a <coughs> lie oh yes discernment discernment another child asked something very interesting says alokda is reading all these things why does he feel like communicating with a child who is you know like as if you know i am so much low and all so the child asked me i said no no you know when mother was asked that mother how do i come down to the level of the child you know mother's answer no alokda what is the answer i said mother said you have to come up to the level of the child so i said you are the future so actually you are ahead so but they instinctively connect they understand these things which are uh, another child since you know we are talking about say you know all this we do havan and all this this is not the real thing so what is the real thing jyot jyot has to be lit inside the heart teach the child aspiration jyot the flame has to be lit inside the heart that's where we have to give things now who has taught children all this so spontaneously we see that these children i am talking of very young children of course i must say that it's very very unfortunate that even today our education system and our parents they do everything to smother this flame everything to smother this flame still some break free the pioneers who break free and search for the promised land so <laughs> but they do everything through no 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 all this is not think about practical thing right now you think about career this that so uh, they respect whatever it be parents teachers so they their mind gets but eventually they are going to grow in number how long can you really stop this new consciousness so we have these forerunners of a divine multitude this is the divine family which is going to increase upon earth out of the paths of the morning star they came into the little room of mortal life it's interesting shubhind is using the word morning star oh yes so the star which is still there when the day time when the light is shown and they are the ones who are their witness otherwise night you have these guides and pointers but they vanish when the day breaks but there are stars who shine even in the morning of course the morning star has uh, different mystic connotations i saw them cross the twilight of an age this is what we are going through that's why the confusion the twilight of an age so there are we don't know the new way but we don't want the old way we'll figure out mother has said that the superman will find the law of his being intuitively it's like how man found man found so superman is the mentor and guide it will eventually take us to and during that phase we will see confusion we'll see experimentation but we'll we use the word confusion because it doesn't conform to the old order but it's it's the new order in the making we will also see the dark forces trying to hold yes, on yes they will try to you know bring back things and you know to go back to an old pattern but it's like a lost battle the sun eyed children of a marvelous dawn the great creators with wide brows of calm the massive barrier breakers of the world no limits you give them limits only so that they feel the urge to break it <laughs> if you want children not to break a rule don't give them too many rules depending on the age you may give a rule or two which is meant for their safety but you give too many rules they will 100% break it because you are bringing out in them the krishna 
some basic rules of safety you can give and not too many rules because they will cross it people often ask during adolescent what are the things we should be really careful about so i tell them there are only two things about which you will be careful that's based on all the experience of one if a child goes into depression and is suicidal then you have to be very careful and the second is if the child goes into drugs all the rest is just nothing but a growing up process don't get into you know they will go through experimentation they'll go through things but these are things because they can be threatening to the life and and there also more than rules you have to just understand talk to them and then you will tend to understand what they are really going through inside and wrestlers with destiny in her lists of will one of the problems that today's generation has of course every generation has a problem with the parents which is because it's one step ahead which is fine but one of them is that my parents don't understand me so it's very common and if you are feeling this problem you are on the good track it means you have gone further and uh, parents also need to understand that well they are figuring out a new way that way is bound to be different and uh, they will be uh, i have written articles on this probably you will see a generation or two which is like a wash out generation simply because they don't know the way but eventually the new consciousness will take bodies and they will find the way like explorers in a jungle not knowing who they are so this is how it is and wrestlers with destiny in a list of will the laborers in the quarries of the gods the messengers of the incommunicable so this line reminds me of messengers of the incommunicable um yesterday we were speaking about speaking about it but from a different angle so how do we communicate the higher knowledge it is normally communicated through scriptures so there is somebody who intercedes between god's truth and you and that is a scripture it communicates supposed to communicate what god wants of you the laws of god and the way of living <laughs> they don't go by the scripture they find their own ways and means of discovering and living this truth they will not use the scriptural language but they will be closer to the truth which is enshrined within it which is something so amazing a direct contact direct contact so they are the messengers of the incommunicable they don't need this intercession through that's why see what should be the gay people don't realize it's scriptures of the future and so much ahead have you ever seen a scripture describing about human unity the vision of and where he talks about nations nations coming together he also took up the past and drew out of it that which is needed for the future synthesis of yoga he starts like that what you see in the world today is cauldron of media it reminds me of a yagya actually <laughs> where all the different things are being shredded and put to make a nice kichdi out of it again the essays on the gita how does he start it says we do not belong to the past dawns but the noons of the future so he makes it very clear that i am bringing out of the past what is still useful for the sum total of human progress and then when he has done all this the synthesis of yoga essays on the gita secret of the vedas shows us the hints toward the future the life divine which is a document about the future then he gives us savitri now this is the book of the future so in all this he takes out all that is there in the past if you see 1914 to 1920 every book has that touch of the past including human cycle where it takes out the best of the past and integrates it with the future like he talks about the in human cycle about the curve of reason the subjective ages of mankind then talks about internationalism then he talks about the religion of humanity which is at that point of time probably it was too early today people talk about it but at that point of time to talk about religion of humanity is seeing way into the future and he speaks of all this the you know uh, toward the future then 1920 all the past he has cleared taking out the essence and leaving the rest and then from 1927 again 16 he started savitri 
But then 27 again, he starts working on this main important work. This is the book of the future, where completely he brings out what the future will be and what we are reading today. This uh, dance of Shiva, just to go back a little yeah. bit. Um, I think this was referring very much to World War II. Yes, because it's written during that time. Yes, exactly. All the values were broken. After that came modernism, postmodernism. Yes. The breakdown, the modern art, which, you know, took a different form altogether, which initially was very chaotic. But then this was the path. All the values were gone. Yeah, you were saying something. Well, this earth was all run with fire and the roar of death, clamoring to slay a world his hunger had made. This is very clearly Hitler. And yes, yes, and his tribe. Yes, yes. So we go back now mm. to the, the messengers of, of the, the incommunicable. incommunicable, the architects, architects of, of immortality. At one place in his poem, In the Moonlight, which is again about the future, yes. he speaks, he says, why are we here? So there is a wonderful passage. One of them is, uh, he says, to build immortality with transient things. So it, it reminded me of, a, you know, of course, Savitri itself. Everything used in Savitri, and of course, I was thinking of Ved Vyas, Mahabharata, and books like that. All things that are used, materials, are transient. The pen, the ink, the paper. But he has built immortality and eternity out of transient things. That is the beauty. And it is not only about writing a book, it is about an action which will leave an imprint upon creation. Uh, again in book 1, Canto 3, he says, Each action left the footprints of a god. So many of us may not realize because it's going through a churning process. Some of us are trying out new ways of life because the old is gone. And the new is yet to be discovered. But we may not realize it that we are setting new trends for nature. And one day these trends will multiply and from here, there and something very new is going to emerge. And several times, you know, I have uh, spoken about in different ways. In every sphere, whether it be work sphere, whether it be human relationships, in every sphere new trends are coming up. And these trends have broken the past mold. And they will eventually emerge towards a new future, which we don't yet know. In all earnestness, we don't know. And it's good that we don't know, because otherwise we'll fix it into a format, <laughs> rather than organically evolving. And he says, what good is prevision to the doomed? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because otherwise we'll feel, oh, new, new creation should be like this. So we will force fit it into a format and turn it into a hard religion. So it will evolve organically. The earth should be there. Mother says there should be yes in your heart and aspiration. We should understand that whatever the old world could provide, its utmost is nothing. That we must remember. And then we search. And this is so exciting. When I look at the journey like that, oh, we are like newborn babes. Often I feel, I don't know how to live. And it's so beautiful. I remember going to hospital, working. And I used to feel, what is this place? What is this place? It's so strange. And I have, like, from 16 and a half, I have been with hospitals, you know, I mean, MBBS days. And I would feel, this cannot be the way to heal things. This is not done. But I don't know how to heal. I don't have, like, magical power that I'll do like this and you will heal. But this is not something which is acceptable. That you take a man and, you know, throw him into a cart and wheel him into the OT, pick up a knife and cut him and shove an injection and... <laughs> put all kinds of tubes it's such a horrifying undignified sight okay man will survive but his soul has been maimed this is not the life that you know I can imagine but what that new way is we may not know I mean things may happen but we don't know what is the final way but one day man will discover ways and means inner ways and means to heal himself and the world around this I truly believe in it will emerge as a result of evolution organically. Thankfully, because of many, probably because of these challenges, it will emerge. So that's how. I'll continue here. Yeah. 
Into the fallen human sphere they came, faces that wore the immortal's glory still, voices that communed still with the thoughts of God, bodies mm -hmm. made beautiful by the Spirit's light, carrying the magic word, the mystic fire, carrying the Dionysian cup of joy, approaching eyes of a diviner man, lips chanting an unknown anthem of the soul, feet echoing in the corridors of time. You know, records of Yoga, Shurvindo writes one of his previsions and he says, I'm forgetting, does he mention hundreds of beings or thousands or number of beings from the future who want to come here? There are beings who have evolved to an extent uh, where, you know, humanity could not hold them anymore. But they don't want to merge themselves. They want to wait. They have waited. Even if you look at the world's evolution from the Vedic days, till date. So there must have been beings, at least hundreds of beings who must have evolved to a point where they... Where they, sorry, where they wanted to come down to take up something further, they would have felt like this, that there is something much greater than this wonderful experience. And while they were waiting, now they know the time has come. That's how the mother has also said. So they came into the fallen human sphere. After some time, she says, there are people who have waited for hundreds of years, thousands of years. Dhuban Bhai, she said he was a Vedic Rishi. So Vedic age, 10,000 years. What was he doing? And some of them she has made very interesting remarks. She said, I can't disappoint Amrita, Pavitra and these people. They have waited for it. When were they waiting? Where were they waiting? So these were not ordinary beings. They were all waiting for the time to come. And Purani playing with a supermind. Supermind. <laughs> so they were waiting and they come. So such children are bound to come more and more. They will enter the human sphere, but with a will to create things anew. And that's why they'll carry the magic word, the word of new creation. Magic word yes. is that power they will bring, the mystic fire. Yes. So all this will be there in them. And one of their signs, all the signs are there. Their eyes, their faces, their voices, their thoughts. You know, they will naturally, one, like one of the things mother describes about the thought of the Superman. She says it will be impossible for the Superman to act out of any selfish gain. She says it will be impossible. You can't make him. Even if you try to say your advantage, this word will not exist in the dictionary of the Superman. He cannot act for any selfish gain. And surely such children are there. Such beings are there. So thoughts of God. God doesn't act selfishly. He acts for the whole creation. So thoughts of God, then their faces will be different. Their body is made beautiful by the spirit's light. Even that is going to, you know, I don't know what will happen to the cosmetic industry. So <laughs> it's okay. All, all that will go away. Yeah, even the natural fragrance, you see, all this is an imitation. Shobindo's body, 9th December, his body has been, you know, laid to rest. There were people who took him in the casket took him and put in the casket and brought him to the samadhi. You know, there was a very little kind of fluid coming out of the body. Normally, uh, you know, that fluid in in person who normally who dies a normal death, that word death doesn't, uh, you know, apply to Sri But uh, it is something which doesn't give a uh, good smell. With Sri it was a lotus fragrance. Even in the hands of those who carried the body. And with Sri Mother says, whenever you went near him, it was fragrance of a lotus. Not only that, it goes further. That sometimes Sri presence can declare itself simply by the lotus fragrance. I am myself aware of that. You will, you know, you will wonder that where is this fragrance because Sri is around. So, you see, the body itself is undergoing a transmutation where uh, its smell, you know, all this is beginning to change. So, this is the body and of course, they will be happy 
Dionysian cup of joy. <laughs> Uh, they are the, you know, the god of wine. Uh, uh, god of wine, you know, yeah, <laughs> Dionysus. <laughs> Later on, it, uh, you know, it's, it's the tantra of Ananda, Anand Marg. Later on, it, de- of course, degraded because they took the wine too literally, <laughs> and they found like drunkards on the road, but they didn't follow any norm. Dionysians were like that. They didn't follow any norm. They were the Greek ones. Apollonians were more like, you know, the Gyan yogis. But Dionysians were seekers of Ananda. And they had found a way. But the mystic wine, the soma, everything like a Vedic thing. And later on, the later followers like we have in India, Shivji takes bhang. I, You have taken bhang. You don't understand what Shivji takes. You know, so because you take bhang, so you think that Shiva is taking it. He takes that bhang after which all this bhang of yours will finish. Its poison will be over. So, the same thing with these Dionysians. So, they understood that, okay, we must take wine and be happy. And they were lying on the roads, carrying the scepter. It's a very fascinating tale uh, from the Greek mythologies, you know, the Dionysians and the Apollonians. So, Dionysians, cup of joy, somras, kapiala, literally in, you can translate. Approaching eyes of a diviner man, how will you recognize them? They will not carry, I am Swami so and so. Just the eyes you will see and you will recognize. Mother would say, there are eyes where you can just go deep inside and see the soul. And there are others where you feel iron cages which are, you know. And then um, lips chanting an unknown anthem of the soul. Oh. We know anthems. Oh. Yeah. But unknown anthem of the soul. Feet echoing in the corridors of time. They are messengers of the incommunicable. So they are bringing messages from future. Feet echoing in the corridors of time. High priests of wisdom, sweetness, might and bliss, discoverers of beauty's sunlit ways, and swimmers of love's laughing fiery floods, and dancers Mm. within rapture's golden doors. Their tread one day shall change the suffering earth and justify the light on nature's face. And there is a line in the previous page when he speaks about these aspects of the new creation, new being. And this line is on page five, uh, 342 where he speaks about this new being, the executor of the divine attempt. Equipped to wear the earthly body of God, communicant and prophet and lover and king. In fact, the passage starts, I'll read just a few lines. In anguish we labor that from us may rise a larger seeing man with a nobler heart. A golden vessel of the incarnate truth. The executor of the divine attempt, equipped to wear the earthly body of God. Just imagine what he is saying. Equipped to wear the earthly body of God. Communicant and prophet and lover and king. So it is not about creating a host of sadhus, sannyasis and sant mahatma. It is totally a new creation, a new being with all activities. Taking the burden with that light. Expressing that light. So they are high priests of wisdom. Sweetness, might and bliss. So it's not a wisdom which says, Oh, hereby I condemn you for all the sins you have committed. It's not that wisdom. In fact, wisdom never condemns. Wisdom understands. Wisdom is compassion. So they are high priests of wisdom. Sweetness. So it's a, not a wisdom divorced from sweetness. Sweetness. Sweetness is, yeah. I have been told, Sri Aurobindo's favorite word. Yes. Oh, I'm so He's happy used to it hear more it. than 80 times in Savitri. Yes. Sweetest of the sweet. So beautiful, yes. Sweetness. High priests of wisdom, sweetness, might, and bliss. Discoverers of beauty, sunlit ways. They will discover the new way, which is beautiful. They will not like to, you know, our way is, if I like this here, if I don't like, break it. The, you know, that division, our way is that. But they will discover beautiful ways, 
harmonious ways there is a beautiful play of the mother toward the future what is it about even when they separate look at the beauty or dignity she puts the hand of her husband i mean that lady's husband in the hands of the person whom he loves now and he says i understand i only pray and uh, you know tell you that lead your life beautifully and not in the animal way as for myself i have understood that only the divine can fulfill my thirst it <coughs> it is so remarkable otherwise you see what happens in the old kind of life either two people will live together and fight every day including the day of karwa chauth that day maybe they spare each other almost every day well or else they will just cut separate you go your way i go my way but this is something so different beauty sunlit ways we can't even imagine for everything and dancers and swimmers of loves laughing fiery floods they are not afraid of love they know how to swim in it they are not drowned in it they and dancers within raptures golden doors na ah, this is so wonderful dance is rhythm all about their way of life will be rhythmic instinct with the rhythms of truth you can't fix them into a format it will be instinct with the rhythms of truth and therefore it will be rapturous their tread one day shall change the suffering earth and justify the light on nature's face so hope is not with governments machineries systems equipments inventions i may add hope is with the children who come with a new consciousness they are the messengers of the incommunicable <laughs> okay so we stop so beautiful namaste namaste